Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the California State University at Northridge Geography Environmental Studies Department. This is a quick video tutorial designed to help students, mostly in my crime and forensic geography class, learn how to download some crime data from, in this case, the Los Angeles Sheriff Department's website, and we're going to convert it into a data visualization using Microsoft Power BI. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to get the data, and I believe if you type in LASD, that's for Los Angeles Sheriff Department, and then type in part one and two crimes, it should, uh, Google should bring you to uh, this page and the first of the return in the search are is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to click on that and it brings us to this page. So you will scroll down, you can read through this and what we're looking for is uh, the historical crime data. You can pick any year you want, um, but I'm going to uh, suggest uh, 2019. Now this is a CSV file and it's very large and so you uh, should have already um, have downloaded this but if not download it someplace and then remember where it is and you're going to go back and pull this data using Microsoft Power BI. If you're in my class you may have uh, this page and these links already so you can go through this uh, this fashion to get to the same place. I'm going to launch Microsoft Power BI here quickly. All students at our university should have it available to them either in the lab or uh, through their account at home. This is the launch window for uh, a brand new untitled Power BI desktop visualization. You can um, close this window, click on Get Data, and of course the data we're looking for is a CSV file, which is what you just saved, and so you would select that. Now you can find whatever data you want, uh, depending on where you downloaded it, but uh, if you're on campus, um, you would go to the Y drive and perhaps come to LASD data for Los Angeles Sheriff Department data and open that and pick one of these years. Um, why don't you use 2019 and I'll use 2020. It doesn't really matter. So I've clicked that and it connects with the drive and this is the load and transform window and so we will want to click on transform data because there are some data columns that we will need to or we should change. This is an important step in a lot of data management that GIS professionals need to know about. Notice these, this first column of data, these are uh, essentially an incident report number and these are the kind of things like zip codes that you really shouldn't be able to add up or subtract or get a sum and so it should be tr transformed from a number one two three here you see indicating it is function like a number so click on that and select text and click replace current that it will change that to a left justified text reference there are a number of these that you want to do the same so you can do multiple ones. We'll do one more this way. Click on stat and change it to text. Replace current, correct. It jumps to the left side and functions now as a text. Scroll over, we notice the zip code's not functioning correctly. So change that to text. Replace current. But if you want to do several at a time, like the reporting district, the sequence, and uh, maybe there's one more, and part one, two, 
part category. These are all should be changed um, from whole numbers to text. Uh, a way to do them in batches is to click up here at data type and change to text and replace current and then you can do three at a time. So that's good. Once it looks like this you're fine. Notice that there is a latitude and longitude coordinate. That's very important for what we're going to do and also the other major category that we want to look at is here the category and the date columns. Notice that they are correct. It, this is the little calendar here and this is calendar and time so the software is recognizing uh, correctly the type of data that is being used. So up here in the corner click close and apply. It'll take a moment for the data to load uh, the first thing we want to do, because we're geographers, is to create a new visual. So click on new visual, little box in the corner. You may want to resize it to whatever size uh, you think is appropriate. I generally take the whole screen for the map. And the type of map we want is the standard kind of map here. So click on the little globe icon. Notice that the visualization changes a bit. Here in the fields, click on the thing, the greater than sign, the little V, and we want to click, grab, hold, and move latitude over to the latitude field in the visualizations box, and the longitude, uh, pull that over and put it down too. And already we have a map. Uh, these are all of the crimes that are in the database, map to a latitude and longitude. That's great. Um, what we also want to do is we want these bubbles to appear based on the category of crime. And there are several ways to do this, but I think the best way is to grab the word category and put that in legend. And so we have loads of different colors of crimes and at some locations you see sort of um, a bubble with multiple um, colors on it, which means that the, oftentimes that there's multiple crimes committed at the same location. If you want to um, format the map so it looks like you would like it, uh, click on the format your visual icon and there's a couple of things you can change that are useful. One is you may not want the road style map, perhaps you want uh, a dark or a gray scale, a light map. You can experiment with this. And now I like these dark ones. Um, I like to add a zoom button and depending on the characteristic of the map you may also want to turn off auto zoom. Um, and then the bubble size. I generally like the bubble sizes on a crowded map like this to be down at something like negative 25. You can set that however you would like and notice the map changes. You can change the colors to what you would like as well. That would take a while to do that but for for example maybe something as heinous as criminal homicide you might want to change that to red and then uh, maybe all your property crimes you would change them to some kind of blue maybe some of the smaller crimes you make them uh, like a smaller uh, color um, we don't want to make weapons crimes uh, also red uh, make that I don't know blue but you can you can uh, experiment with all of that so now you have a map it's a pretty crowded map so one of the things that you probably would like to do next is to add uh, a filter or two. So I'm going to click it once again, a new visual. I'm going to make this filter smaller and I'm going to click over here on slicer, which is their filter. And perhaps we want to grab a category and put it here in the field. And then we have um, all the categories listed. So this is a checkbox, but maybe we don't want a checkbox. Slicer settings, we have a vertical, li vertical list. Maybe we want a drop-down list instead. 
and so then you can just select from the drop down menu maybe just all the arsons or all the burglaries and that's how uh, slicer works we could um, copy that visual so I right clicked copy the visual and then just control V to paste another one and so in this a slicer maybe we'll change it um, from category to um, maybe unit name there we go and then that would allow us to sort of zoom in say and just look at what's going on in Carson and I'm zooming in here on Carson all the crimes in Carson but maybe we just want to look at uh, homicides in Carson and they're red and there's only a few of them that's pretty nice and I think maybe we would like one more slicer so I'm gonna click new visual and select slicer again and then uh, maybe we could do this um, as an incident date and grab that here and it would have all of the dates that the incident um, reported we see that this from 1960 to 2021 some of these shouldn't really be in the database either they were misreported or something else is wrong so we don't want data from 1960 on our map so we would click here to filters on all pages this is what we want to do and we can grab this incident date and we would uh, you can do it several ways um, you would diselect all of these things that were outside of your range that you want so um, that might take a while but we might do um, advanced filtering and and tell it to um, everything that is after and we would want to select a date say um, let's go back to one month back December 31st and we were looking at was it 2020 data so um, 2019 so everything that is after that date and uh, before and again we can click on a date here um, and before January 2022 I think that should get us a lot of things and get rid of the, that we don't want apply the filter notice our map didn't change because those homicides all occurred in uh, 2020 and again this kind of filter can be changed to something different and the last thing we'll do is put one more visual on here and maybe how about a uh, a pie chart and we can take pie charts and put the values in here of a category and is as a legend these are all criminal homicides so if we clear the selections from both Carson and the unit name we have a kind of pie chart of all of the different types of crimes and a nice map of all of that so um, this is all you are asked to do for this assignment um, get a screen grab of this uh, you'll probably want to save it in some fashion um, and you can also um, um, at some point uh, we'll show you how to publish this um, as a web page so that's it for this lesson